then we have our last presentation for today. Um, very interesting from my perspective is uh, from Silent Yards, one of the pioneers, I would say, in sustainable yachting, boating. Um, their stand is in Hall 7A. I came across already several times yesterday. We have Stefan Kress here, Chief Innovation Officer from Silent Yards, and he will talk us through the brand and through the future of Silent Yards. Thank you very much for coming. Right. Thank you uh, for, for the intro, so, um, and thank you for, for the invite uh, to talk here. Um, Stefan Kress from Silent Yards. I want to talk a bit more about why solar electric propulsion is a good option for recreational yachting. Um, and uh, maybe just uh, before we start with anything, I wanted to show you uh, a picture of uh, one of our boats. Uh, so this is the Silent 60, so you can see the top view. On the top side, you can see all of uh, the solar panels that are uh, producing the electricity both for our household and the propulsion. And um, what's important is the overall optimization of the, of the yacht. Um, you really need to think about it holistically. I mean, we decided on a catamaran concept because catamarans have a low hull resistance. So it takes only a small amount of energy of propelling it through the water. So that's why this setup is beneficial, but it's also beneficial because you can maximize the solar area because the roof structure is quite big. We, we actually occupy quite a large surface area with that boat. That's why we can fit uh, a lot of solar panels on the roof. And all of this optimization that only makes it possible to actually have a solar electric propelled yacht. And uh, another thing that we learned over the years is how to tweak all of the components that they're actually working correctly. And uh, we can learn a lot from like residential solar applications and uh, maybe something from uh, racing catamarans. So there are lots of things to learn from other areas, but then there's also a lot of learning by doing, um, which we've done over the years. Um, just my background, um, I've worked in, uh, in research, next generation uh, so solar and renewable energy technologies, and now working with Silent Yachts on, the, on uh, mostly the drivetrain sites and the new technology. Um, Silent Yachts uh, actually started uh, as more or less a project of uh, the founder uh, couple, uh, Heike and Michael. They've been, uh, let's say, boaties or, or yachties all, all their life, and they've realized that actually powering your vessel, uh, your, your yacht is actually quite tedious. Either you have quite a low-powered alternator, you have to run the generator, and uh, then they came across uh, solar, and they actually realized it's a great way to power your boat. Um, and, and I'm sure by now, like many of you at your home, you might be powering your, your house, uh, at least uh, partially, also uh, with, with the solar technology that you have uh, solar panels on your roof, and you, you can see at home that actually you can power, power your house uh, with solar. So wanted first to start why solar is actually a good idea. Um, in my opinion, solar is the ultimate energy source because it's actually where most of the other energy sources are derived because like our energy source is the sun. All of the energy actually comes via solar radiation to Earth. All of the other effects, like wind and tidal, there are secondary effects. You need to heat up the, like the soil in order to generate wind. You need this differential. The same is for you could say tidal, uh, well, t sorry, tidal is a bad example, no, like waves. Waves is a good one, like this is actually a secondary effect. If you say uh, solar is your initial energy source, then actually wind is a secondary and, uh, and waves is actually a, a third order effect. So everything is coming after, but the ultimate source is actually solar. So we have gigantic amounts of solar available. And that's why I think it's good to tap that energy source. Um, you can also see that it's rather a good idea uh, when you look at a map of the solar irradiation on a horizontal surface on Earth. And you can see that 
the Mediterranean and the Caribbean, they actually get a lot of, they get a lot of solar. So it, it is quite viable to power the yachts that are in the Mediterranean and the Caribbean to power them by solar, so solar energy. And um, the, I think the great contribution uh, of silent yachts and also of uh, Heike and Michael actually has been to demonstrate that a solar-powered yacht is actually a possibility. So uh, what you can see here on the left-hand side is the Solar Wave 46. That was the, uh, the first like, solar-powered yacht. And they've been cruising uh, around with this boat on, uh, on rivers. Uh, I think they've been on the Rhine, definitely the Danube and also in the Mediterranean with this uh, solar-powered catamaran. And they've not only powered the household with it, but also like all of the propulsion. So they've, they've demonstrated that actually cruising and living on board a solar-powered catamaran is possible. The, the next generation was uh, the, the Solar Wave 64 in 2015, so al already also a few years ago, where they've uh, demonstrated that it's also possible on a, on a larger concept, um, and this, this uh, solar electric yacht also crossed the Atlantic, so that also offshore cruising would be a, a possibility with these types of uh, vessels. Uh, from then on, um, we continued uh, the development of uh, solar electric yachts. So we launched the uh, Silent 55, which is a slightly smaller version. Um, we launched the Silent 60, which is also currently our, our, that we're still producing now, also in our shipyard in Italy. Um, and then with different variations of the 60s, we'll continue next year with the launch. What I'm really excited about is the Silent 80 Tri-Deck. It's a very, uh, I mean, it's a very spacious boat that's like a, a home or like a villa at sea that is uh, self-powered and then uh, the year after will be the launch of the Silent 120 that's currently in build in Turkey. Um, here you can see also like our current range again. It consists of the Silent 60, 60 foot catamaran, Silent 80 and Silent uh, 120 and then the smaller tender boat and essentially an electric partially foiling rib. Um, about the silent drivetrain, our objective is to have a self-sufficient yacht that is, uh, that is just run by the solar. But there might be occasions when you're, it's heavily overcast or like your consumption is very high that you would need uh, additional s power than you would have available. To compensate this, we actually have, we don't have this, only have the solar array that's feeding the battery pack and storing the uh, solar energy that we've gathered over the previous days, but also uh, a generator. At the moment, it's a diesel generator because it's quite proven uh, technology, but in the future, this can be a micro turbine or a fuel cell if it's uh, hydrogen or methanol. So um, this can actually be, be, be changed arbitrarily. And um, what's not displayed here, but of course the battery pack is also supplying all of your household. Um, and what's most important to me um, is actually that the boat under mostly like all circumstances, it is quiet. That's why our range is also called silent. It's not only that we're environmentally friendly and we're primarily using renewable energies, but uh, we're also doing this in, in, in a silent way, meaning that even if you run your air conditioning, you don't need to run the generator because you have, in, in the battery packs, you have as much energy as in about three fully charged big Teslas, like the, 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 the biggest model. So we have around 300 kilowatt hours. So you can definitely run all of your household air conditioning for multiple days just off the battery. You will not have to uh, turn on the generator at night which I always found, even on sailing yachts, because my background is sailing, I always found it quite annoying, to be honest, to choose between the cabin being hot or the cabin being loud. Actually, on a, on a, on a silent yacht, you can actually, it can be silent and it can be cool and nicely air-conditioned at night. Um, so, um, 
Well, this is, this is more or less the setup uh, that we have, and you can think about like of the battery pack as our storage and buffer. Uh, this actually allows us to have uh, different types of uh, propulsion uh, that you could call this way. One is like the solar electric, in, in a sense that we take the solar energy, maybe it's buffered a little bit in the battery, and it's going to the propulsion. This is very quiet because there is uh, an electric engine that's only turning at let's say 500 RPM is a very quiet engine. Uh, and uh, you could say that at slow speeds, the boat, like w when you decrease, further decrease and decrease the speed, you can actually go infinitely, you can go an infinite distance because the, you're uh, generating uh, energy with the solar panels and you aren't using uh, uh, as much uh, on, the, on the propulsion. But of course, the higher you choose your speed, the faster you're going to use up the energy that you've generated via solar. Uh, the next is what you could call like battery electric, which I think a lot of uh, um, yacht makers are, are offering here. So you can plug in your boat, you can charge it with the, for example, with the shore power and you go electric to the bay, you come back to, uh, to the marina and you recharge it. But having said that, most like we usually don't plug in our boats, which is also nice for, for some marinas because the, actually the electricity in the marina is quite expensive. So we, we're just like, when we come to a marina, we might have it docked there, but we, we're not plugging it in because we have our generation on our roof. Uh, and some of my friends like that are captains in uh, Palma, I mean, they're using, uh, they, they have big boats, like a 30 meter, 40 meter, but they have an energy bill of 3000 euros in the, in, for example, Club de Mar in Palma, uh, which we, we don't have that expense because we have our generation on our roof. Um, of course, you can also charge it via your generator, which might be a wiser option sometimes in ports because it, the electricity is actually more expensive. Um, but our primary way to charge the batteries is via solar. Uh, the last one, which is a good, uh, good method of going uh, like to go like during the night to do uh, like for example from south of France to like Corsica also uh, is go to go diesel electric because we cannot store as much energy in the batteries to go at a at a relatively high speed overnight. So what we do in that case we run the generator. The generator is uh, buffering into the batteries and then the the energy is fed to the uh, propulsion engines. This is beneficial um, actually. Under, under most circumstances because we can run the diesel generator at the, at the optimum efficiency point. So even if you, let's say your generator is running at 100 kilowatts, most efficient, you don't want to run this generator at 30 kilowatt if you only use 30 kilowatts for propulsion. You want to run it actually at 100 kilowatt at the maximum efficiency point and then turn it off and feed your, uh, feed your electric engines then for the next two hours off of the batteries because this way you get the best fuel economy out of this one. So what does this all uh, leave us? Uh, what are actually the, the advantages of a, of a silent yacht? Maybe I'm going to start uh, uh, with the second to last one. It's actually that silent, which is for me like an actual, it improves the quality of life on board, is like that you have noiseless cruising and also noiseless sitting at anchor, which for me is even more important. Because like, if I arrive at a bay and I need to turn on the generator, this is actually a nuisance. Also, if you go swimming behind your boat and it doesn't have a very good uh, uh, exhaust filter, then you also get emissions in, 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 in your face, which you also don't have to do with the silent yacht. Because if you're at anchor, you have plenty of solar uh, on the roof feeding your household so you don't need to turn on the generator. You will never swim in the fumes uh, of your generator behind your yacht. Uh, then you essentially have unlimited range and other benefits like, like for example, like the, the electric propulsion, which means like lower maintenance. I think like a lot of like, maybe some of you own the, uh, or own a Tesla and it's just like you do have lower maintenance for, 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 for these types of boats because uh, a uh, combustion engine is rather intensive in terms of like maintenance and usage. Um, 
Now I wanted to dive into more of uh, our offering, of our range. So starting with the, with the Silent 60. Uh, this here is um, the Silent 60 that uh, we used to produce it in, uh, in Thailand. So you can see the, see the boat here. Um, it has 70 kilowatt peak solar on the roof. You can, depending on the... Uh, depending on where you're actually cruising, you can multiply your peak power because that's the maximum power that your solar panel can generate at noontime under test conditions. If you've installed your solar array correctly in typical cruising grounds, you can multiply that number by five to six hours in order to, to reach, like, in order to calculate how many kilowatt hours you're getting out in a day. Because in the morning, the, the sun is pretty shallow and it's, uh, it's straight from top at, at, at noon. And like this factor of five to six is taking into account that if the installation is done properly. Uh, so you arrive at with around 100 kilowatt hours per day, which is again like your top of the range electric car has. You can fully charge like let's say your top of the range electric car with this solar array. Um, we have up to four times that capacity. So for our largest capacity, you would be sitting, if you arrive fully discharged, like let's say you, um, you do actually quite a large distance, let's say from one end of Mallorca to the other end of Ibiza, uh, and you come, arrive with fully depleted uh, batteries, it would take you four days to recharge. But this is for like you completely discharged and uh, you have the biggest battery pack. So here's just like some... Uh, um, interior views of, uh, the, uh, of, of our Silent 60. You can see it looks like you, you're not making any compromises compared to your home. This is one of the big benefits of having the catamaran platform. Um, we're like closing the whole loop. It's like we, we have the, uh, the Silent Tender which you can actually charge from the solar array of the boat. Like for such a small boat like the Silent Tender, it wouldn't make much sense uh, to put like a solar roof on the top. It would add like quite a lot of weight for the small tender. It would make it less stable. It wouldn't be practical. But we have uh, a big solar array on our main yard and we can charge the electric tender from the array of, uh, of the, the 60 or the 80. So this the next one is like the Silent 80 series, which I think is my favorite boat because the it is a general rule, I think, for catamarans. The bigger they are, the more beautiful the design can be because you can stretch them a little bit and still have the, like a nice ceiling height. So I think the, the, silent, the silent 80, uh, actually designed by Marco Casali, is, in my opinion, a, like a very, uh, a very beautiful, uh, a very beautiful uh, solar electric yacht. Um, so you have the, 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 what we call like tri-deck open. So it's, it has three decks. And uh, the, the, the top track, the, like the flybridge, is open, which, uh, well, here you can uh, see it a little bit, but more or less the specs, we have uh, the same maximum battery capacity and increased, increased solar power. So you can generate around 150 kilowatt hours per day uh, on, on board this yacht. Um, few more pictures like a I mean it's again a, a side view but I think this is my that's what I'm looking forward to I think this year is being on the on the flybridge of uh, of, of this yacht because you essentially you have like a lounge area overlooking the sea and it's it's all p powered by solar um, from an engineering perspective what's also great about this it's not like you have actually the have the outdoor living but it's also when you have this, the, these, these, these open structures, you, they're not air conditioned. You just have the breeze. So you're not, you don't have as much uh, energy expense to air condition this entire space there, but you're actually enjoying the outside. Because it's a lot about like educating also the users because um, only if the user understands what I think what certain actions like have on like energy consumption, you can actually have like a very well-functioning solar electric yacht. Like for example, like if you, if you set the air conditioning at 18 degrees and leave the door open, 
you would just be running through all of your energy just by the air conditioning. So it is, it's, it's not only about, I think, the yacht manufacturers, but I think it's also an understanding for the consumer on how to act in, like a, in, a, in a renewable uh, or in, in an energy-conscious way. And I think this is a great concept, having an open, shaded space where the top structure is used for solar. Uh, now, our uh, um, final yacht that's in build currently, and the hull will soon be flipped. It's a silent 120. Um, you can see the structure here. This is a world cruising uh, solar electric yacht. I mean, the benefit, it's, it has very efficient hulls. Uh, they're, they're very narrow hulls. Uh, you have a big solar area. So uh, and, uh, you, you actually, in, in essence, like with this boat, you would much fewer times you would actually need to go for refueling. It has a much longer range than a typical boat like this because we've optimized everything for efficiency. So the hulls are very efficient. We get like a lot of, uh, uh, we have around uh, 40 kilowatt peak um, as a solar, so more than 200 kilowatt hours are generated per day. So you can run the ho household. So at least like uh, you wouldn't need to run the generator while you're at anchor. Which is, which is quite remarkable for like, such a size boat, because normally you would be constantly running a generator if you're talking about uh, a 37-meter boat. Um, here are a few, few more images. I mean, it includes all of the um, things that are uh, requested for such a size boat. You have a pool, and of course, like, things you need to really take care of is like, how do you heat the pool? Because uh, a pool heating takes a lot of uh, takes actually a lot of energy and you have to uh, think about like wh how do you get this energy from like how do you are you using waste heat for example or where are you getting it from because like what currently the motor yachts are doing they might just be uh, running a boiler so you're taking electricity from the generator you're uh, you're using and you're using electricity to boil the uh, to to heat the water which does not make sense um, well, here are like a few more pictures. You can kind of see the partially wave-piercing hulls for, because this one should be going also to Alaska and so forth. Here the interior, the uh, in interior spaces, which I think are very generous, so you're not, definitely not missing anything uh, when you're on board this, this yacht. And um, yeah, just a beautiful interior. And you can actually enjoy the sea in a, in a renewable fashion. Um, here, this is uh, one of our, our own shipyard, actually in Italy, where we pr produce our yachts. Uh, this here is a, is a silent, silent 60 in production. You can see some of the deck. This is the hull. And uh, here, multiple of the silent 60s in build. We've actually, I think I don't have a picture of this one here, unfortunately, because I think I would get tr in trouble with the marketing department, but we've recently launched the first 60 from that facility. But if I would show it here, I think I would get in trouble. Uh, this here is our other yard here in uh, Turkey, where we build some of our bigger boats. This is a Silent 80. Um, and we also have the Silent 120 in build here uh, in, in, in Turkey. And soon, like, the hull will be flipped and the deck will go on so that it will be recognized as a Silent 120. But it's a very impressive boat. I mean, we're talking about a 37-meter catamaran. It is a big, big boat. Um, so maybe the takeaways um, that I wanted to communicate is, uh, and hope, uh, I hope it came across, is like uh, solar is by far the largest uh, renewable energy source on land, uh, on land and on water, especially on water because usually we have fewer clouds and uh, uh, we, we, we have... Uh, fewer clouds and usually we're cruising in sunny areas at least that's uh, for, for me I think like further up north here like people also like to go north but predominantly we like to be in the Med in the Caribbean and maybe French Polynesia and also solar PV on land and also at sea and particularly on sea is the cheapest source of energy of renewable energy if you maybe just a quick calculation on this I mean currently the prices of solar photovoltaic energy is around six cents per kilowatt hour. If you think about uh, what you pay for your diesel now, maybe when you, let's assume a conservative one euro fifty 
per liter of diesel. In your generator, you get around three kilowatt hours per liter out. So you're paying 50 cents per kilowatt hour from your generator just for the diesel. If you're using actually solar photovoltaics, you're at six cents, so around 10 times cheaper. Um, so it's definitely solar photovoltaics should actually, even for boats that are propelled by diesel, should actually be using uh, solar, in my opinion, just from an economic point of view. Um, well, Silent Yards actually have, over, over the years, more, more than 10 years, 15 years, has pioneered solar electric yachting. We still are. And uh, solar electric yachts have many benefits besides being green. Uh, we have actually unlimited range. For me, most important, it's noiseless. Also zero emission, because also emission can be tedious, not just bad for the planet, but also tedious for yourself. And uh, you actually have a self-sufficient uh, villa at sea, which is also quite exciting, I think, for people, that they can actually live at sea. You are completely, you have your, you have your floating villa, where you have all of your electricity needs are supplied, and you have your water desalination plant on the boat, once you start going fishing, you're actually fine. So uh, uh, you don't need anything more than that, which I think is a nice idea. Um, and in my opinion, maybe the last point is just what I think. I think the future actually belongs at least partially to uh, solar-powered yachting. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Um, yeah, Stefan, thank you very much. Very yeah. impressive. Very good presentation, in my opinion. Any questions from the audience? No? Not today. I have one question with yeah. your philosophy. Yes. The 120, is it the maximum size you can build, or can you go even bigger? There are co so there are concepts for bigger boats, because people always ask for bigger boats, so we, we, we do have a concept for a bigger one. Um, maybe I wanted to give like uh, one example. Like if you... Um, if you double the size of your boat, double the length, then usually you have double the width, let's say. And so your solar area goes up by a factor of four. So you have two for the length, two for the width, so it goes up by a factor of four. But your volume, I mean, it's a third dimension, so it goes up by a factor of eight. So that's why, like, your, and your volumes, uh, like, or, like, your air conditioning needs scales with the volumes that you have. So it also goes up by a factor of eight. So it's harder to make a boat self-sufficient uh, the bigger you make it, because the volume grows faster than the surface area that you have available for solar. So that's why um, we think there is a sweet spot. In my opinion, like the sweet spot is probably around like between 40 and maybe 100 foot, but this can always change with technology, because that sweet spot might change once we have more efficient solar panels that might go to a bigger size that you can actually supply your boat uh, just with solar um, to like a bigger size. You can make actually the, the boat bigger. So it's constantly changing, but let's say Lursen uh, can, should probably look, look uh, you know, against some, some other uh, area in which they are, like they're looking at methanol, but does it hurt for Lursen to add a solar roof? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Stefan. Yeah. The, no more questions. So this is uh, it for the day here at the Blue Innovation Talk. We see you tomorrow. We start again at 11, and then we have a very nice um, presentation. It's or like a show, nearly. It's like Shark Tank, if you know this, or Die Höhle der Löwen. So we have five nice startups here tomorrow morning at 11 with a jury and presentation. So um, I'm looking very forward to this. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.